worth an estimated $50 million. Now, again, it's so hard to comment on whether this was a good decision made by Ninja, because we don't really know what would have happened if Ninja simply stayed on Twitch. What are you saying, dude? There is no world in which Ninja staying on Twitch was a better decision than him going to Mixer for the amount of money he went to Mixer for and for the time that he was there for, this is one of the most, it is like objectively a good decision. That's crazy. Dude, what, what kind of content does this guy have? Like, this is like Juice World's final 27 hours. Who streamer who faked his wheelchair? Mr. B's brother didn't succeed. Why Mr. B's brother didn't succeed on YouTube? Sisters who faked their money? What the f this is why you shouldn't work out? Wait, this is the guy I watched. This is the only JS guy. This is the video I watched, the how only Jays became TikTok's most hated creator. And like the that's why we do Hassan positivity. In case no one told you this, your hair is looking extra thick today. Luscious locks, my friend. Thank you, Johnny Depp's sheets. Has PewDiePie lost the motivation for YouTube? Yes, of course. Oh god, this is kind of sad, dude. This is like the graveyard of this is the graveyard of content creators and also literally like people who have died. Lil Xan deserves his failure. I went to high school with one of the guys who was involved in X6 death. Makes Jay Aubrey look like the Harvard of YouTube. Watch his ninja video. <laughs> why why did you why did you go from this makes Jay Aubrey Oh, but also keep watching. You're gonna have a nightmare about him making your video. Yeah, why why Hassan Pika got washed? How Hassan Pika went washed. Why Ninja's career died? Back in Fortnite. April 2018, when Ninja was gaining this. 200 million views per month on YouTube, setting world records with Drake over on Twitch, and earning $5 million a month from his creator code. Yeah, I think the most I've ever made in a month off of the creator code was like 5 mil. Failure probably felt like an impossibility. However, the past- I mean, it is. It was. It was like a bubble. Like, it was 100% a bubble. That's like not a thing. You know what I mean? It's not a thing that will probably also ever happen ever again. Three and a half years have been somewhat of a sobering reality check for the former king of Fortnite, forcing him to come to terms with the fact that at a certain point in his journey, whether he knew it or not, something this went- This is the ultimate view count any channel? Yeah, I see wrong. that. His YouTube viewership has dropped by a mind-blowing 97% to between four and six million views per month. His Twitch viewership has dropped by an almost equally severe 92% from 125 5,000 average concurrent viewers to approximately 10,000, all while his various social media follow accounts. Such this one is really hating him so hard. Like Ninja gets 20K average views now. It's not him failing. He's just not crazy successful. So for Ninja, I mean, when you're peaking to that degree, I think that's the reason why it's like, like Ninja was what XQC is right now. You know what I mean? He was, and and not for the same, not for the same time frame as XQC was the XQC of YouTube. But you have to understand that, like, because of the numbers that he was hitting, because of like how he was literally the the face of Twitch and the face of live streaming, and like you know made live streaming way more accessible to normies like the the peaks that he hit were unimaginable so always he's going to uh, always he was going to fall off from that you can never stay that high you know what i mean he just he just got an unimaginable bag and and now he's just chilling he's just off the perk you know what i mean he's just chilling he's making content by like going to disneyland and and hanging out and drinking drinks from every at the epcot center drinking different drinks from all around the world and doing accents okay I mean, it is a pretty fat W overall. Like, that motherfucker had merch in Walmart. Yeah, he had like an Adidas deal, bro. Come on. He got a mixer. <sighs> the thing is that probably f***ed your brain up. Like, oh my God. That, those highs and lows probably destroy you, right? Like, there's no way that doesn't. Because, like, you're literally getting phone calls from, like, to be on Jimmy Kimmel. And then now you're, like, back to streaming on Twitch. In a Ryan Reynolds movie? I mean, yeah. That's like, that's just like a fun little thing that don't forget getting Sammy's from his girlfriend in parentheses brawless. Yes, that's true. He's like, I mean, his life is fine. His life is always going to be fine. How much money total do you estimate he made? I have no idea because you have to understand the amount of money he was able to make from like the Fortnite codes because the Fortnite, I'm sure this video is going to cover it. Like because Fortnite was so fucking bananas that like, I don't, I don't know. I, 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 there's no way to know. Heard you had some talking points. Want to share about what? as Instagram have been in complete and utter freefall. Perhaps a severe unprecedented fall was the only inevitable outcome after such a fast, unbelievable rise to fame in the first place. Only six months prior to gaining
gaining 200 million views per month, Ninja was basically a nobody. He had appeared on the television show Family Feud. What do you do? Uh, I'm a professional video game player. I travel across the country and compete playing video games. And he gained a small internet following of around 100,000 YouTube subscribers as a professional Halo player dating all the way back to 2009. He charges in, but Ninja is nowhere to be found, dude. I'm a magician. However, Battle Royale seemed to be the genre that Ninja had been born to play. He began to mess around with H1Z1 all the way back in 2015. Halo was horrible. No one really on Twitch watches it. Bro, that ad, that, that audio alone is like, I didn't even hear what he said, but it's just like, it just sounds like hate speech, okay? When I hear the Xbox Live audio, I'm like, that's hate speech, right? Like, don't watch his How TYT Died video, nephew. He made a How TYT Died video? No! No! Oh no! What? He did not. Oh, or nor, or nor. He didn't. He didn't do that. You. Why did you do that? Why did you lie to me like that? He did one on Ethan though. Oh, let me guess. It's a uh, Ethan Klein no longer is doing funny content, and therefore because he's no longer doing funny content, because he's no longer doing his centrist commentary, it fell off. It's there. You got to type the Young Turks. I literally did. It didn't come up. This channel has no content matched the Young Turks. Are you stalking me without being subscribed again? Wait, what the f How does he know? What the f I didn't even say TYT didn't die. Um, Ethan is now in SJW. The thing he hated the most. So, what am I going to say? Yeah, no, that's that's clear. That's what's going to be uh, the... Um, and then I switched over to HMZ1. I got to pee though again. I'll be back in one second. And by early 2017, only two years later, Ninja had set the world record for the most kills ever in a single H1Z1 match, while also becoming rank number one for North American H1Z1 players, resulting in his first bit of success on Twitch. At my prime in H1Z1, when I was going for my kill records and getting 30 kill games and stuff like that, um, I was averaging like 10,000 viewers a day. Ninja would display a similar level of skill after switching to PUBG, often finishing games with upwards of 20 kills, and having built a strong foundation with Battle Royale experience, a seamless transition into Fortnite was almost guaranteed. First impression of the game, it's fun. When considering the previous information about his skill as a professional H1Z1 and PUBG player, it should come as no surprise that Ninja was a natural at Fortnite from the very first week. He dropped his first 20 kill game only 12 days after the game's release. <laughs> and his first 25 kill game only three days after that. The audience didn't flock to his channel on the very first day. However, the fact that Fortnite had a new player base meant that Ninja had exposure to a new audience. This new audience liked him as he'd carried over a genuine, almost toxic personality that he'd developed during the H1Z1 and PUBG days when it only had a small following. The fact that he had this small following meant he really had nothing to lose with regards to how he acted on camera. He could be toxic, kind, annoyed, happy, whatever. It didn't matter because it always came off as authentic and genuine. In addition to this, his small audience meant he wasn't inundated with sponsorships, business opportunities, and other extracurricular activities chewing up his time. It was just raw, unfiltered gaming all day, every day, trying to be- Dude, this is like, this is literally X right now. Yeah, no matter what happens, I think like the little Zoomers, whoever, and they keep growing up and then they like, uh, they become politics understanders and you know, we welcome them. But no matter what happens, there's always a, there's always a space for one guy who's going to be playing games and being toxic as and like every 14 year old is going to be like, I want to be like that guy. And it went from, I think it went from like Ninja to XQC a little bit for sure. Become as skilled as possible to provide <laughs> the best content possible. With this approach, growth was inevitable. Ninja began to ride the tsunami sized Fortnite wave gaming. as each and every gamer was looking for a new pro player to watch. 1 million views turned into 7 million views the next month, then 35 million views by January 2018, only one month later. At around the same time, wait until people come to their senses that socialism is bad and this channel has a video about you. I know. People think socialism is really good right now. People are always saying like, I love socialism. It's the best, famously. But you know, once they, once they come to their fucking senses. <laughs> And in time, approximately three months after the game's release, Ninja had become what many considered to be the best all-round player in the game, and was certainly one of the first people that came to mind when thinking about pro Fortnite players. With such, his Twitch followers also exploded exponentially, growing from My 500, older roommate is actually like that about H2 now, started dating her libertarian boyfriend, and now she calls him a libtard. Also started around the time you guys started Leftovers. Yeah, I think a lot of people loved Frenemies, and then they were like, they thought that it was going to be like drama-induced, like shit like that, and then when Leftovers came out, they were like, what the f this is not drama. This is not frenemies. This is politics. This is very different. And uh, yeah. 
to 3 million over the course of only four months, placing him in the position of the most followed Twitch streamer and the first streamer ever to reach 3 million followers. This would help him to then break the world record for the most concurrent viewers on a Twitch stream ever after he and Drake streamed to 628,000 people, which would then be broken again after Ninja hosted an amateur professional tournament to over 600. I'm not even kidding. I think this was probably the first time I ever like saw what a Twitch stream was. 80,000 people only one month after that. Ninja basically had a Fortnite viewership monopoly for the first six months of the game. He was better than everyone else, more dedicated to streaming than everyone else, had an excellent attitude and was a generally likable person. Everyone could agree that at the time, his 125,000 average Twitch viewers per stream and 200 million monthly views on YouTube were 110% deserved. Oh! However, the landscape was shifting. He was 125k Andy, are you kidding me, dude? He was 125k, that's so much. That literally doesn't even exist now. What the f That's crazy. Holy shit. That's wild underneath Ninja's feet. Other players, streamers, and YouTubers were beginning to match his skill level. In April 2018, Ninja's peak month on both- Excuse me, pulled that with no effort? Wait, what? What planet are you living on? No, of course he doesn't pull that with no effort. He never pulls that. What are you talking about? 125k average is not a thing. Like, it's not a thing that you see ever. He had 250k concurrent subs for like two months. Yeah, I think that's crazy. XQC is currently at 80k or 87k. Except that's pre that's pretty high for him. I think he's like he sways around like 70 to 80k, 70 to 70 to like I would say 75k average, 70 to like 80k, and then if there's something like crazy going on, he'll hit like 100k. That's not 125k average. I don't know why Twitch viewers tell me a Twitch streamer, okay, what average view counts look like. I literally know better than you. It is a part of my job. Okay. I don't know why. Like, it's fine. You might, you know, you might be like, uh, might be like a little bit of a fan. And, uh, you know, that's, <sighs> and also pre COVID, this is like incredible, dude. His peak was two, 320, 312K. Yes. My peak is 226K or uh, 227K. That doesn't mean anything. What the, f the, the peak is nothing. Okay. It doesn't mean anything. Judy Cinderella's peak is like 600k or some shit, or 400k from the one event she threw. That doesn't mean that she's, that doesn't do anything for, you know, what we're talking about. When we're talking about the average view count. Mother will literally think watching the most popular Twitch streamer for the past three years actually makes you somehow a hipster in this chat. Like, he's literally the most popular Twitch streamer for like the past two years. What is wrong? You're not like special, <laughs> quite literally. Anyway, Twitch and YouTube, we saw players like Tfue uploading 36 kill solo v squad matches, High Distortion was dropping a 30 bomb every second day, and generally speaking, the skill gap that is 125k in 2018 is like 250k today based on the percentage of the viewer base. Yeah, that's probably true because there's a lot more people on Twitch now as well. Okay. Help Ninja to stand out in the beginning had well and truly begun to close by mid 2018. As other players were becoming better at the game, there was now significantly more competition for Ninja's channel on Twitch, and in the days of PUBG, he explained that more competition hurt his overall viewership. Dr. Disrespect, Shroud, Summit, Tim the Tatman, I have to compete with all these people to just take away of a huge pool of people from, uh, like when I, you know, when they're not on, I'm up to like 12, 13, 14K sometimes. In addition to increasing Twitch competition from individuals like Tfue, it seemed as though Ninja began to invest less energy into what blew him up in the first place, being a professional gamer, and rather focus more energy on being a branded celebrity. He began to get involved in oh, yeah. sponsorship deals with big companies. He started flying around the country doing meetings. Yeah, which is smart. He literally got the bag for that reason like literally that's the smart thing to do that is straight up the smart thing to do you have to be mentally ill to not do that and then only do this every day and there are a couple of us out there okay you know exactly who those people are that don't do this and instead just stream for the pure you know the disgruntled ex fan take but well, i mean i'm just being fuck he says you no i'm talking about myself of course i'm talking about myself of course yes i am talking about myself 100 there are a couple people who do it because they have love for the game they love being on top they love fucking streaming they love having a community there's a, a lot of different reasons that motivates a couple people to do that i'm one of those people Asmongold is another one of those people. I would say XQC obviously is another one of those people. There are people who just straight up are just like, I don't give a f um, 
it's more so just the 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 you know mental illness of just like this doing this and enjoying this you got plans on becoming an actor <laughs> Yeah, dude. Things in interviews. The last six months, flying everywhere and doing all these interviews and, you know, meetings and meetings. While well, he'd upgrade his streaming room to a super expensive top tier ninja dojo. Embroidered ninja chair. Uh, this is where I'm going to be controlling all the uh, professional cameras in the room. Camera angle one. Camera angle two. <laughs> and camera angle three. For the doggy bowls. The room looked fantastic. There's no doubt yeah, about like it. Yeah, me, dude. I got all these camera angles. Remember when I wanted to have multiple guests over and i have not been able to figure it out look at that camera angles dude doesn't change anything okay it felt very Dog commercial cam, cat, lacked cam. the relatability and authenticity that had helped him to grow in the beginning now perhaps ninja felt as though he needed to take this path of public appearances and material stream improvements in order to continue the growth of his brand but other streamers like tfue were certainly proving this to be the opposite turner was just this relatable dude living with his dad and brother at their messy suburban house in florida he'd win sometimes jump out the window reveal his backyard full of junk and continue on playing now obviously it'd be ridiculous to claim that tfue or any other creator's rise was directly responsible for ninja's fall but it did show that there were other players and streamers who just seemed more focused, relatable, or watchable. Ninja's viewership began to dive pretty rapidly in the six months after his peak, and in the process, it would also come to the surface that Ninja's extreme level of fame had brought about a further shift in his attitude and public image. As mentioned earlier, when Ninja was a comparatively smaller streamer, he really had nothing to lose when it came to being his authentic, unfiltered self. However, after blowing up, he made the conscious effort to shift- I mean, this got real, like, I like Ninja before he popped off energy, like, well he was he could be himself and he could just like be a lot of times on the internet for a lot of especially men on the internet authenticity is toxicity the more toxic you are the more authentic you are to 14 year olds which you know he might have been like young at the time as well and probably thought that that was like this has the i like the old ninja vibes yeah i mean straight up that's that's usually where it comes from his personality into what he thought the audience wanted as opposed to just being his natural self specifically for example becoming family friendly now it's super understandable as to why ninja would do this obviously the fastest route to success is going to it's be what makes deliver me to the audience exactly what they want however when it comes to changing your own personality for the audience you're getting into risky territory because you're starting to lose the authenticity that people followed you for in the beginning and an authentic personality like what ninja had in the beginning is not only an advantage it's a requirement it's the ability to say here's what I think. If you don't like it, I don't care. If you then hate me, so be it. Go watch someone else. I'll still be here streaming to those who enjoy SJW what I do. Culture. Ninja had become the exact opposite of this. He'd given the audience complete and utter control of what he could and couldn't post. 100% look at the comments. He's being shit on. His career didn't die. It just achieved this purpose. Wealth. Honestly, Ninja did it right. He realized that once he wasn't playing, once he wasn't playing only kids and people started matching his skill level, he noticed that it wasn't going to be the skill that made him stand out. So he created Ninja as a brand. Yeah, I mean, he did a really good fucking job. Like, <laughs> Ninja is literally the example of a content creator that uh, did not have the the like. If you don't have some kind of straight mental decay, mental rot, you farm a meta. And you get the bag, and that's it. He has life-changing money for the rest of his life. Literally, done. What is this? I watch your channel for unbiased analytical videos, social media events. For the most part, you do this extremely well. Most of this video comes across as, to me, as unbiased as analytical. However, there are times where this video feels more like a personal attack against Ninja than an analysis of the decline of his viewership. Comments like spineless and fake piece of shit take away from the authenticity of your analysis. <laughs> I called him fake piece of shit? What the f you're usually blunt when talking about these creators, but wow, you don't even try to tone down how much you hate Ninja Law. Bit biased. This guy's a multimillionaire. I would absolutely say he succeeded. Yeah, I mean, my man has a brawless wife bringing him sandwiches, okay? Like, does he have a lot of cringe takes? 100%, okay? Super cringe. All the time. But that doesn't change the reality that, like, he got the bag, rode the meta, made himself into a brand, still going on like jimmy kimmel or whatever because like 50 year old bookers don't know any better they're like oh yeah ninja that's like come on there's like something internet related let's bring ninja on you know what i mean they don't care the only people that do care are people who are like extremely online constantly looking at metrics and think that they know the platform better than the streamers themselves i.e the viewers prepare for the lawsuit i said nothing wrong about ninja including his brawless wife bringing him a sandwich while he's you know playing league of legends okay what am i gonna get sued for the truth what the not asked for. Yes, I forget. Not asked for. <sighs> Making a big mistake. Ninja is literally still a household name and he's still the face of Twitch for anyone who doesn't use the platform. He's a bigger celebrity than anyone else on the platform. <clears throat> You're right.
You are right, though, for sure. That tweet has me in a chokehold, not asked for. <laughs> Pokey almost got sued by Ninja's wife. Brawless for the truth. <laughs> Fucking stop, dude. Stop, 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 stop. Ninja has a book. You don't, you don't, you can't talk. Is right. Post. Literally, watch this clip where he doesn't even want to shout out his creator code or make a post on Twitter as he didn't want to receive backlash from his audience. I don't pro promote my creator code very much because I just get flamed by everybody. I, I can't that. tweet 9% of things I want to tweet because, like, people will just, they just meme it. They make it into a meme. Selfies, make it into a meme. That like, dick eating is crazy. Tough him, 15 year old baby mama. What the f are you okay, dude? What is happening? Why well, I just post clips now? All Ninja was doing was showing everyone how spineless he'd become. No wonder people started to hate him. Yet Ninja seemed totally oblivious to the fact that it was because he'd completely abandoned his authentic personality in exchange for his family-friendly pretending to be nice garbage that everyone could tell was completely fake. At some point, somehow. Oh man, it's spoilers, dude. That's like fucked up. <laughs> spoilers. Yo, he called them spoilers, dude. Look, look, look. <laughs> I mean, look, Ninja has cringe. Ninja was cringe before and after. Okay, that's irrelevant. But, like, to say he's spoinless is, is I don't know. Uh, you know? he's He just got the bag. He, he's killing it. He's living his life. You know what I mean? I, I can't. I would not be able to live like that 100% because I care more about other shit. Like, really stupid shit. Stupid shit that doesn't uh, actually help me in the long run. But if you're, like, a pro-capitalism guy then you should love what ninja did it became a cool thing to like dislike me everyone yeah, everyone hated anything? me you done it? like it became no. like a thing to pick on me the complaining now felt as though it was coming from a position of entitlement like he was owed respect from his audience and that it was unfair that he had received so much hate but criticism from the audience is the price of admission when you decide to become a streamer and the fact that he continued to complain about being hated just meant he became more and more hated people looked for specific things to call him i knew ninja made it when he came back the Twitch after a mixer deal and was cracking white claws at 11 a.m. on a Monday, rich as <laughs> Michael. That's either really rich person behavior or really poor person behavior. Okay, it's either or. <laughs> Sometimes both. Yeah, it's both. No, no middle class mother doing that. Okay, no, no person who has like a job at a no, no person who's like a mid level marketing manager is doing that. Uh, cracking a white claw at 11. Lamau Daff. What the f white power? Um, Ninja at the hospital, kid starts having a seizure. There's the emote. There it is. Wait, on because they knew they'd get a reaction. Going back to the example of Tfue, you could tell that he didn't even care about the criticism and therefore he received some- Dude, this is such watcher behavior. I'm going to be honest, okay? As a content creator myself, this is watcher behavior. Let me tell you why. Ninja is going through it at that point because he's on a downtrend. And when you're on a downtrend, people get- brutal okay get real brutal towards you and then you're constantly 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 f complaining okay because like your people are like abusing you and then they abuse you more you just said streamers are consenting to the abuse by deciding to stream and he's like oh well tfue's not consenting to the abuse or whatever it's like my twitter timeline is full of crypto bros freaking the f out how oh, have you know i've been cracking white claws at 11 since work at home work from home became a thing substantially less criticism in the first place. Now, Tfue wasn't perfect either. He always had something to complain about within Fortnite, but it wasn't in the same crybaby way, acting as if the whole world was always against him. I mean, dude, he literally just saying Tfue was crying too, but he was doing it in a cooler way. What the some reason. However, for Ninja, the problem wasn't only increasing competition from better or equally skilled players with more likable personalities. The amount of people watching Fortnite was also like he he just he let I mean that's it. That's the and in a lot of instances, in a lot of instances, that's what it is. The way that someone dick riding and dick eating, okay? The way that someone views the exact same thing that people are saying with like relatively similar backgrounds is how much you like one person and how much you like the other person and how little you like the other person. That's it, okay? Straight up. It's the exact, like, he, they could be crying in the exact same way, but he just doesn't like the way that Ninja is and he likes the way that Tifu is because he's like, Tifu's toxic equals authentic. That's it. Like, and Ninja is no longer toxic equals no longer authentic. He's inauthentic. 
also beginning to decline. In the year after Ninja had hit his peak, Twitch's average daily Fortnite viewership dropped by 30 to 40%. Fortnite's Google trend graph followed a similar pattern. People were searching for the game less and less every single month. Videos discussing the potential death I think he of liked Fortnite Ninja a lot. Viral, and dude, hating the game for the reason lot. became the trendy thing to do. With Ninja's popularity being directly tied to that Fortnite's was, popularity, the final if the game blow, were though. to die, Ninja was unavoidably going down with it. This is without a doubt. Bro, that lives in my mind, okay? Like Ninja, hate Ninja, whatever, but that video lives in my mind. It occupies a space that probably like my first ever kiss or some shit occupied beforehand. I don't remember it. I don't remember things like important formative memories. I do not remember because the flossing, I want to see, I'm not seeing enough movement. I'm not seeing enough movement. And with the music playing and it's raining, we have to watch it. It is literally a, 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 it is a memory the size of like multiple memories. Okay. On, with the baby. music. I'm not seeing enough movement. With the music, dude, with the music playing in the background, like it's one of the, it's one of the most important moments. It is literally a, it is now a core memory. It's so perfect. Like it's raining. It's like dripping on him a little bit. No one is moving. Everyone's having a bad time. It's pouring. You can see his like red hair uh, with like his, his suit and the suit looks shiny. I'm not seeing enough movement. It's incredible. It's actually incredible. About the reason as to why Ninja began to play other games on stream. League of Legends, Apex Legends, Valorant, streaming hundreds of hours on each under the assumption that one of them might be the next big game. Now, it'd be unfair to say that this was a stupid idea. Obviously, streamers always have to be on the lookout for what might be the next big game opportunity. <laughs> so this is the second worst attack on New York City. <laughs> oh, you f uh, anyway, yeah, no, I mean. Uh, meta meta hunting is normal. It's I mean he even admits that. I don't know why he's getting mad at him for that. Or maybe he wanted to play those games. You know, that so could be a Ninja thing. dedicated a high percentage of his limited stream time and many YouTube uploads to Valorant, assuming he'd be at the front of the pack when the Fortnite audience decided to migrate over. But the migration never really happened. And in the process, those who wanted to continue watching Fortnite got themselves hooked on other streamers who were providing that Fortnite content, such as Cipher PK. It also didn't help that throughout this process, Ninja wasn't even streaming on the most viewed platform, Twitch, and had instead signed an exclusivity deal with mixer worth oh come on he's not gonna say that this is bad right like dude he got like he got an unimaginable amount of money and it was demonstrably successful because the platform fell apart and he still got the contract like one could go so far as to say that like that contract is the reason why the platform fell apart okay that was so much money an estimated $50 million. Now, again, it's so hard to comment on whether this was a good decision made by Ninja because we don't really know what would have happened if Ninja simply stayed on Twitch. What are you saying, dude? There is no world in which Ninja staying on Twitch was a better decision than him going to Mixer for the amount of money he went to Mixer for and for the time that he was there for this is one of the most, it is like objectively a good decision. There are very few decisions on the planet that are so objectively and demonstrably good. Okay? Like, what if a fucking, uh, I don't know, asteroid hits? What if, I don't know, somehow like uh, a mega millionaire, what if Elon Musk is, becomes a big Twitch streamer fan and wants to give Ninja $1 billion? Like, like very few other things would have literally made more sense than what he did, okay? There is no world in which Ninja was ever going to make that kind of money if he stayed on Twitch. As a matter of fact, he would have made so much less money if he was, oh my God, oh my God. It, we, we also have the benefit of hindsight to know it was an incredibly good decision on December 9th. He knows this, not bad overall, but it hurt his viewership. Dude, who cares at that point? He's already making the decision, dude. He got grandchildren money, dude. What the fuck are you talking about? He got grandchildren money, okay? That's crazy. Dude, what the fuck are you guys saying right now? Staying at Twitch in that situation was like not even one-tenth of the money that he got. Doesn't actually make $25 million a year. He'd make that money two years and still be at the top. Dude, you are crazy. You are crazy there's one xqc xqc is probably one of the only fucking streamers on this this platform is twitch qc like what the
fuck are you talking about? He's the only streamer on the platform that gains viewership when he's playing video games and when he's doing variety. He's the only one who's able to do that. You're you're literally like you're crazy. You're you're out of your mind for saying that like Ninja would be able to pull that off. He would not. His game that he's relying on made him the most successful. This is why game streamers, gaming streamers can have the highest peaks. But then also, they won't have... Asmin been popping off lately? Yeah, Asmin Gold too, but again. Like, look at this. I'm live right now with 30,000 viewers. I'm one of the largest content creators on the platform. And there's people, long-term community subs in here, being like, please look at XQC's stream right now. That's the kind of power he has. It literally is like... He is... Like, there. I have literally 30 month subscribers who are like, dude, your stream is fine and all, but like, can you please look at XQC's stream? It's like, mother... He has 90,000 people watching him. And they're like, no, no. Like, I, I have him on my first monitor, but I want my second monitor to also show XQC. And it's like, there is no, you would not be able to, uh, you would not be able to reach that at all. Wait, he's, by the way, react to XQC, please. Oh, shit, dude. That's crazy. Thanks, chatter. What, did he get a haircut or something? Is that why? I need to get a haircut too. It's been a long ass time. Anyway, all right, let's continue. <sighs> Plus the money they paid him was absolutely insane. However, the amount they paid him was representative of something. It was saying this, here's a short term cash injection because we both know that over the long run, your career is going to take a bit of a dip if you move to Mixer and a dip his career certainly took. In the video letting everyone know he was moving to Mixer, Ninja came out with the same old inauthentic crap stating, yes. What are you most excited for about this change? You know, I feel like this is a really good chance to get back in touch with my roots and really remember why I fell in love with streaming in the first place. Bro, everyone knows the only thing that went through your head. Ninja going to Mixer also literally got so many other streamers paid and continues to do so to this day with deals from other platforms. I don't know why I'm standing up for Ninja so much, but everyone seems branded about how business and society at large works. Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of people think that like, no, I'm not going to get like a full blown haircut, by the way. I'm just going to get a trim. But the thing is yes ninja going to a different platform well different platforms coming on into the fold actually got a lot of streamers paid yes part of the reason why twitch is saying like yeah we don't really care about exclusivity deals anymore and yada 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 is because like there is not a lot of uh, you know competition from other platforms Ed, when you were offered this deal was, is the money worth the damage that it will do to my reputation? It's ingenuine to try and convince your audience that you want to move to Mixer because you want to get back in touch with your streaming roots. You assume that your audience is so dumb that they won't be able to tell when you're lying through your teeth. Oh my god, dude. Okay, this dude feels like personally slighted. Did Ninja like f this dude's mom or something? What the f All of his other videos are very different vibe wise. Like we watched some of his videos very different vibe wise than this one it's crazy just you can yeah this is like there's a lot of salt here for some reason i don't know what's happening there the dudes you ban i think ninja might have banned him yeah when the cash cow moved to a new farm the farmers got scared and fed the other existing and potential up-and-coming cash cows guys brawless girlfriend brought ninja a sandwich unasked <laughs> Oh no, stop. Maybe you the juices barber a try. He's insane. Wait, what? No, I have my own. F I have my own hairstylist barber friend. Okay. Why would I? What? Strangest people on the platform. I just, sometimes you got to remember it like you're talking to girls, I think. <laughs> um, I mean, if you consider how resentful and bitter Ninja is to people who criticize these days, uh, it's not unreasonable to shit on Ninja. Dude, when you get to that level of fame, everybody hates you. It's like literally the popular thing to shit on you. And and I I know that. Like, I'm, I experienced some levels of it. Uh, I experienced some levels of it as well. But like, I think I managed it a little bit better than that. But also, uh, this is a little bit over the top. Like, the criticism is a little bit over the top. Especially because like... The criticism is is overshadowing the actual analysis, which is like Ninja's career didn't die. Ninja's career thrives, dude. It, it's like he literally milked as much as he could off of a meta. Like he demonstrably, and that's why you'll see like a lot of other streamers probably have a similar take to myself here. Like he did his, he, he rode the wave to the top. He rode the wave to the top and then at the top he maximized on it and ultimately like fortnite died and ninja still was able to ninja was able to get off that ship before it died you know what i mean and even now i think even now i think like he he still gets like what how many viewers does he have does he is he live right now i don't know but uh, how many viewers does he have let's see okay let's go browse live channels okay is he live currently chat 
He's not live currently. 10 to 15k viewers. Ninja off the perk was huge numbers for him though. <laughs> no. Can I die, but isn't NR if most watched on stream on Twitch? It has around 3 to 4 million daily active users. Dead game, I guess. Well, I can't speak for Fortnite's like active daily active usership number, but I'm, I suspect that that's also gone down uh, from its peak. But having said that, I am almost certain that uh, Fortnite, I mean, I know for a fact that Fortnite streaming has died. Like, it's dead as a streaming meta. You know what I mean? I mean, I respect your opinion and you make sense, but I respect the top dogs of Twitch these days who care more about building and expanding the craft of streaming rather than making money. I mean, are you talking about one like myself then? Like, who was the top dog of... Are you talking about Elon Musk, BTC Bitcoin giveaway? Is that the top dog you're referencing? Like, who are you talking about? But it's cringe. It's cringe to be a top dog on this platform. It's cringe. XQC will literally say the exact same thing. It's like being, what does he say? He's like being king of the rats. It's a, ultimately like you just have to have literally brain disease to enjoy streaming this much. The real top of the hour ad break is what we need to be focusing on, however, because at the top of the hour, there's a six second ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. You can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. That's right. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use on your favorite top dog streamer she does make a shit ton of money does he not know no i know but it mars delinquent thank you for the five of the subs now right now hey then you sit back and wonder why they hate you it's because you have a propensity towards being a fake piece of shit perhaps not everyone agreed or they just hadn't figured it out yet as 12 months after signing the contract ninja was still averaging like dude 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 look look he had already dropped off from the peak of Fortnite. he's like averaging twitch he's averaging 37k on twitch not 120k like when Fortnite was peaking right so then he goes to mixer and he has like 8k which is crazy for mixer when you think about it and now he's back to twitch and he still has like 10 to 20k viewers who gives a you know what I mean? 8,500. Wait, did you just call him a piece of shit? Propensity towards being a fake piece of shit. Perhaps not everyone agreed or they just hadn't figured it out yet. As 12 months after signing the contract, Ninja was still averaging 8,500 concurrent viewers per stream over on Mixer. However, this was substantially less than the 40,000 average viewers he was receiving on Twitch before making the move. Mixer then shut down in July 2020. Ninja returned to Twitch and he was back to getting 40,000 views per stream. Well, only briefly. Only two months later, his viewership had declined back down to 10,000 average concurrent viewers, similar to the amount he'd been receiving over on Mixer. On YouTube, a similar decline was well underway. As lockdowns around the globe were coming to an end, Ninja's viewership dropped from 40 million a month to 25 million a month, then 15 million a month, at which point it was becoming blatantly obvious that- What happened? Did Ninja like, you know, fold him or something in Fortnite? Like, what, what the f he just, I mean, this is the ultimate view count Andy channel. You know what I mean? It's a serious lack of innovation. He's going to make effort. one on me soon. He's going to be like, which is politics reign. He hit during the election cycle. He hit 200,000 viewers on January 6th. And then after that, he failed. Everybody found out that socialism is bullshit. When they figured out this piece of shit was a hypocrite. Now look at him. He's got 28,000 viewers <laughs> put into the youtube videos most of his titles and thumbnails look like they hadn't improved since 2018 and nothing solidified this more than a hilarious tweet made about one of these thumbnails on his channel with over 20 million subscribers ninja would post a video using this thumbnail which would be shared on twitch by not luke stating someone tell ninja to fix his designer please this is hard to watch and would receive replies such as i still can't believe that's actually the thumbnail i could do better on pixar on my phone wait what what the He's just like reading random f people shitting on Ninja. And how is it possible to be this bad? What? I feel like he must have done it himself for some reason. Ninja then changed the thumbnail to a thumbnail he had already used for an older video. He ended up changing it, which to be fair, does look a lot better until you realize it's just a reused thumbnail. The whole thing just showed that he just was Damn, bro. People get off my man's dick, boys. Come on. Come on. Holy f the dick riding Olympics is on, boys. What is happening right now? What the f They're like, they're like upset that he changed his thumbnail back to another thumbo. Like, who cares? What the f I love making fun of Ninja or at least like following Ninja's experiences and adventures. But goddamn, like, you, this is like, this is on a different level. Like, I feel like people are looking for different ways to, to say like he fell off when, you know, he didn't really, he fell on. They're like your haters on triple dose of steroids and meth. Yeah, this is like, yeah, like why isn't he 
talking about like threatening to sue Pokemon or something. I, well, I guess this video is older. Like, there's like way different shit that you could uh, make fun of. There's way different shit that you can make fun of Ninja for. He traded his viewers' luck for free millions from Mixer. Yeah, like that's crazy wasn't putting in the effort anymore not even doing the bare basics like making his own modern looking by the way this goes to show like people literally will get mad at anybody on the internet for anything for the record like the the thumbnail is a great example of this like which you know kind of puts things into perspective for me personally about like why people lose their minds at like every innocuous random thing that i do it's literally just like nitpicking nitpicking anything um that anyone does when you're, you know, a top content creator in any field, any capacity. This is how it is. Thumbnail or analyzing how other successful Fortnite YouTubers were titling their videos. People will blame Ninja's downfall on nothing but Fortnite dying. But when looking at someone like Cypher PK, who is titling his videos correctly and making extremely meta thumbnails, he's only been getting more and more popular over the same period of time. Over the last 12 months, Ninja's lack of innovation has resulted in a drop from 15 million. Bro, Ninja doesn't play that. Wait, I can't believe I'm. Hassan, please go vouch for this right now for Hassan tweet. We are begging. What is this? I'll pick a random non-dream SMP, non-Minecraft fan cam from these comments and tweet it out with no context in around 24 hours. Randomly chosen. Get your best fan cams out. There you go. Hey, there you go. I did it. Views a month to between four and six million views a month. His YouTube channel has become an anti- Is this guy this pedantic in every video he made? No, this is like a specialty. This is this is a this is a special video, I think. 100% have it worse than Ninja. Your haters are significantly more psychotic. Yeah, politics. People that like politics are weird but it is only cluttered mess consisting of a bunch of random shorts and unrelated videos which when compared to someone like cypher pk who i consider to be doing things correctly it's really no surprise that cypher is gaining five to ten times more views despite having only one fifth of the subscribers didn't cypher pk get ripped this yeah dude hey that's a that's a friend of the broadcast cypher pk to you okay um he's the man he's dope he's awesome i love him he's a very nice guy uh but as far as like this video goes i mean he he just never stopped making fortnite content and i think ninja stopped making fortnite content and talking about like putting them together is like kind of matching them up with one another is kind of weird Ninja knows his career is over. No creator who values and respects their over. future as an internet personality would ever do something like his recent multifaceted Raid Shadow Legends sponsorship. This is the move of someone who knows that they're complete. Oh my god, I cannot. First of all, I cannot imagine the, the meteoric, the astronomical bag that was thrown at him for doing this, okay? Like, saying Ninja is over for doing a Raid Shadow Legends ad when, like, literally everyone's doing it. Ninja has his own masterclass on streaming. Jesus Christ. This dude is still literally straight up minting, okay? Straight minting. Straight up, okay? He is the Fed, the Treasury, the Central Bank. He is literally minting, dude. The money printer is still on. And my man is like, yeah, Ninja's a f What a f loser. What a piece of shit loser mother <laughs> like he just what the f dude he's killing it what do you mean you're showing a raid shadow legends ad that he did which is like where he's like physically doing an ad for them he probably got so much money for that completely and utterly finished you'd never see someone like cypher p gay or nick Merckx or even tfue out here doing this kind of in-depth what they 100 percent would do that what the is he saying they literally would one million percent do that like that what bro i will never play raid shadow legends on stream but i would do this ad okay like i i don't even i i wouldn't even play raid Le uh, shadow legends they've asked many times i've always said no but if they were like hey you want to be in a physical ad when we're gonna like give you a samurai sword and shit i'd be like fuck yeah i'm gonna do that yes like just this alone is cool as dude look at this Raid Shadow Legends sponsorship. This is the move of someone who knows that they're completely and utterly finished. You'd never see someone like Cypher P. Gay or Nick Merckx or even- Every other streamer has done a Raid Shadow Legends ad at some point. I've never done one and they've asked a, a, a lot. But if there was like an opportunity to make like a physical ad like this, I would 100% do it. It's sick. Oh, what did they offer you? I don't even remember, but a lot. They have a lot. Of, it's crazy keep you out here doing this kind of in-depth unrelated totally different game brand deal because they know the degree to which it will affect their reputation and future as a content creator ninjas become nothing more than a puppet a jester a clown doing his embarrassing little dance for whatever oh garbage my. sponsorship will throw money oh my him. god dude this took a really weird turn at like 650 like it's just he's just ripping him for being successful as a brand <laughs> 
Okay, dude, dude, dude. I just want to be like, brother, look, look, look. You, you, I've watched some of your other videos and they're good, okay? All I'm going to say is this. Not to get all Ludwig for a second, but like Ninja is not your friend, okay? Not. He is a content creator. He's an entertainer. He is a brand and he is doing what is best for him as a brand and as a content creator. If you thought that like him being toxic originally or whatever was like authentic or whatever, that's kind of your thing. That's a you thing. Okay. What type of content creator to be like Hassan sucks because he thinks socialism is good and is shitting on Ninja for being an uber capitalist. Yeah. I mean, he, he did the smart thing. This is like one of those things that I actually appreciate about like Ludwig or Pokimane. Like these are very smart content creators. Hassan, stop. You do not want this guy as one of your haters. No, I don't. I mean, I'm being very fair. I think his videos are really good. Otherwise, like I enjoyed. This is the first video that I watched where I was like, God damn, this is like, this is weird vibes in it. You know what I mean? And I'm sure he doesn't, he probably isn't a fan of mine regardless because he's like talking about Ethan's downfall and stuff. I'm sure that, yeah. And also what is he going to do? Make another video? There's like a million essays that have made uh videos about me already so ninja even said on the poker stream with lud he went all in for two years and just got the bag he's just chilling now he's set and doesn't care anymore yeah exactly this is what some leftists in the chat must have felt when you bought a house yeah literally i think they were like oh dude you bought a house the I don't know. It doesn't seem to differ from the hyper left streamers making 25 minute essays or five post threads on Twitter. Uh, yeah. So he's more focused on the morality of it than the facts and the rationality of it. Like, come on, man. Hasanabi, let him know. No, I mean, but there is nothing immoral about what he's doing as a content creator. Like he is, he didn't, he didn't change dramatically. He just like became more family friendly, I guess, but that's it. There is no morality about that. If anything, that's more moral. That he's not like as toxic i guess but he was always cringe what the he was always cringe he was cringe before and he's cringe after he's cringer that's just how he is but he's i mean great i i respect what he has done you know i i respect what pokemon do, uh, has done i respect what ludwig has done i don't know i i feel very strange when people are like wow i can't believe they like you know they want what's best for them a ninja was always corny you always need a guy like that yeah that's what i'm that's what i'm saying like he was he was corny and he still is corny are you calling pokey and look cringe too no that's not what i'm saying but they are also brands in them in, in and of itself they are brands bro the bags he's getting dude he has a master class Instead dude he has a master class of grinding on streaming who the is literally like i'm gonna be a streamer let me watch a master class dude oh my god the size of this bag i can see it i do not need a telescope to spot the bag at night okay what the f is this i need to i need to steal this i need to like scam this and watch it on stream i have to what is going on right now? My man did a master class. If you, by definition, know what a master class is, it's too late for you to become like a top streamer, okay? It's like, I'm gonna be honest with you. Who, like, that makes no sense. It's like doing a master. What is, what's next? Is master class gonna be like Charlie D'Amelio? Master class on how to be a TikToker. What the, like, it doesn't make sense. That's awesome. How many times do you take the class to get to where you are? Okay, I need to watch this. Oh my god, I need to watch this. I need to watch this so bad. I need to watch this so bad, dude. Aspiring streamers, you see your potential here. Learn how to be professional, how to log in, how to open the chat. Bro, this is so awesome. New copyright strike, Pog. You think Ninja copy strikes me or do you think Master Class copy strikes me? You would never welcome us? Yeah, bitch, shut the up. You don't do this shit. I've never been welcomed. Yeah. H how would I do a master class on streaming? No random facts about psychotic streamers or, or psychotic chatters like Vorlo, who wants to live under your house for some reason. Like, uh, you know, that's it, it just destroy other memories that you had that you of your loved ones. So you can remember random facts about stream uh, stream chat. Recognize writers in the chat who say Misky would have a better master class. Time them out for a week and move on. This is positivity week. He's streaming from your house, bro. Don't don't pretend you don't recognize it in his streaming mansion. Danny took a master class and made a vid on it. What's up, Greg? Wait, but the ninja one? Hi, I'm Asan. Welcome to my master class. I will teach you how to f chatter as mothers and react to content like a pro without a bitch in your back telling you what to do. Okay, hello. My name is Asan Pikers. My master class on how to get canceled. We're about to blow up your DMs like the towers. <laughs> what? Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>